Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spindle Spotlight. Today's tool is a Kromsky drop spindle. I want to talk a little bit about the stand before I get started. How you store your spindles is pretty important because how you store them is going to ensure that the shafts of the spindles don't work. Now, if you have a metal tipped shaft, that's not as important, but with wood tipped shafts, you want to try and find a way to store them where the shaft is going to stay upright and is going to be secure. This particular stand is by Spanish Peacock. I'll be sure to put the link down in the description. So the tool that I'm going to talk about today is probably one of the easiest tools to come by if you are a new spin spinner. This is a Tromsky drop spindle. And one of the things that I love about it is once again, you have a stick. So if I don't want to put the whirl on this, I can just use this hooked stick as a spinning tool. And of course it has the metal hook as opposed to the wood hook. The other thing that I wanna point out with the Kromsky drop spindle is the fact that with the hook, it will enable me to spin top whorl. But the beauty of this style spindle is it also has a place to do a half hitch. So I can spin either top whorl or bottom whorl, and I'll try to demonstrate both of those today. This is a little bit of a beefier spindle. It has a four inch whorl, and it sits on a 12 inch shaft. This is also a fairly heavy spindle in that it weighs in at right around three ounces, which makes it a little bit heavier than a lot of the other spindles that are available. The benefit to that, it's good for plying. The negative or the downside to that is, it does make it a little bit more difficult if you wanna spin thinner singles once you start building up your cup on the, the shaft itself. So one of the things that you wanna make sure that you do with this particular spindle is to secure it, otherwise your whorl is going to slip and you absolutely don't want that to happen. So getting started with this particular type of spindle, once again, I'm using Merino top, which one is one of the easiest types of fiber to find. One of the things that I wanna point out with this particular top, and again, this is Malbrico, you can see on this particular sample, I have one, two, three, kind of four different sections right here. Well, as a new spinner, this can seem pretty daunting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a smaller section. I'm gonna put that over to the side. So now I'm just working with this small section that is relatively, should be relatively easy to draft out. So once again, to get started, I have this beautiful hook. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, the way that I like to get started, I like to fold a little bit of the fiber over on itself. So it sort of locks in place like so. As a new spinner, I'm going to park and draft to get my leader going. So I will build up some energy and, it, and then I will set this down. I will stop the draft and then I will pull out what I want. When I'm ready to let go, I'll pinch off and then I will let the twist travel. And I didn't put a lot of energy in there, so it didn't travel all the way up, but the nice thing with this is, is now I can kind of start to see my drafting triangle. So I'm gonna pull out just a little bit more there. there we go. Yes, that's more the drafting triangle that I want. I will build up some energy. Oh, that's a lot. Perfect, so I'll set it down nice and springy, and I will start to draft out. Again, I'm using my thumb and my forefinger to stop that draft from traveling into 
the fiber that I don't want spun. So I'm going to start pulling it out. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to work in stages. I'm not going to draft out too much. So I'm going to pull some out. I'm going to stop. I'm going to let the twist travel up. I still have so much energy. So I'm going to pinch. I'm going to draft out some more. And I'm going to let the twist travel up to where I've stopped it. Now I'm going to put because this is a heavier spindle and because I have to get over the whirl in order to start drop spinning with this, I'm going to make this leader just a little bit longer. So I'm going to do this one more time. So springy. Draft. Stop. Draft. Stop. All right. So now I have the twist that's traveled all the way. So now I should be able to wind on down here. I don't think this is going to be long enough, but that's okay because I'm going to show you a trick. Oh, maybe it is. Okay, this is actually long enough. Here's the, another great thing about this particular style of spindle. I have all of this space up here, so if my leader wasn't long enough, I don't have to have it under the whirl just yet. I'm going to go ahead and wind on up here. like so. So I've almost got a mini spindle happening right here. I'm going to draft out. Twist travel up. And as you can see, I have that dangly bit. And as I've mentioned before, I really like the silicone bracelets. So once I'm comfortable with the park and draft method, that's when I can start using this as the drop spindle where I am drafting out as I spin. So now I have a really long leader. And so wrap it around the hook and get it started. I will pinch where I don't want the twist to go and then draft as I go. If you'll notice I'm pinching off to prevent the twist from traveling all through that area that I don't want. Again, I want to keep my body and my arms sort of in, so I'm not overstretching or straining. Yes, I always do put in just a little bit of twist before I start drafting out, simply because it secures the fiber and I'm less likely to break it. So I'll show that again. So I've got the twist, I'll wind on, and then when I wrap it around the hook, I always put in a little bit of a twist, draft out, and then start doing the spin and draft. Like so. And as I mentioned, this does work as both a top and bottom whirl. So I can flip it over, pop that half hitch, on there like so.
and I can use this as a bottom whorl as well. So if you find that you are a drop spinner who prefers bottom whorl, this particular spindle can function as both, which is really nice. The only drawback that I have found, there are two. There are two drawbacks to this particular type of spindle. One is the weight. It can be just a little bit cumbersome. And the second one, it doesn't function well as a supported spindle. And that's one of the things that I really always look for when I look for a drop spindle or any type of spindle is, will I be able to spin it with some kind of base or some kind of support. Unfortunately, this spindle doesn't really provide for that, but it is a beautiful entry level, universal type of spindle that you can spin both singles on as well as ply on. It's also readily available, which makes it a very easy tool to find if you want to get started. So. That is the Kromsky Drop Spindle in a nutshell. That is today's tool on the Sip and Spin. Thanks so much for checking in. As always, if you have a spindle that you would like to see demonstrated, please let me know in the comments.